Home, it's where you build your legacy, where traditions are started, seeds are planted, meals are shared, and stories are told. We are Chris and Natalie Carpenter, owners of Story Real Estate, and our team of top agents helps people find homes in Moscow, Idaho, and around the country. Have you thought about a move? Contact us to get connected with a top agent who shares your values and puts your family first. Or reach out to us about our Moscow Relocation Guide. Wherever you're looking to go, we can help you find home. Call us at Story Real Estate or visit us at storyrealestate.com and start building your legacy. You know what time it is. We don't want to play this theme song. This is our man Steve Dace's theme song. Everybody knows what time it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm a bad man. I'm a bad man. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome to Cross Politic on the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. Pastor Toby Chalk Knox, I'm the water boy. It's it's good to be with you. And and if you haven't joined us before with with you know knowing this theme music, uh, we have Steve Dace coming on to it's talk about man. to talk about his new man. book, The Rise of the Fourth Reich. Yes, fantastic. A copy this, of this this wow. is a history book that your kids need to read, and uh. you need to stick around for this interview. But before that, today's culture shifts like sand, but the new St. Andrews College is established on Christ, the immovable rock. The college is a premier institution that forges evangelical leaders who don't fear or hate the world. Guided by God's word, equipped with the genius of classical liberal arts and God-honoring wisdom and a faculty dedicated to academic rigor and God's kingdom, New St. Andrews College offers an education that frees people. Logic and language, hard work and joyful courage, old books and godly professors. New St. Andrews College provides time-tested resources that can equip your student for any vocation. So find out more today or schedule a visit at New St. Andrews College at NSA. Dot edu nsa.edu I mean, if you want to fight the third and fourth Reich, you got to send your kids to is the third NSA. one. Done? Third yeah, and fourth, uh, third, even... third's still around. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, we're really grateful to have that bad man back, Steve Dace. He's uh, what national politics, Christian worldview, and principled conservatism with a snarky twist. Host of the Steve Dace Show on Blaze. TV, Steve, thanks for and joining Rook, us. And, and he's got his movie, his first movie coming That's out, right. April yes. 14th. No, nefarious <laughs> is the name of it. Is that right? The that is the name of it, gentlemen. Yes. Thank you for coming back on Cross Politic. I mean, it seems like it was just a couple days ago, Steve. You're so kind. I'm, I love talking to you guys. I mean, you're you're really less uh, personable, less <laughs> flexible, um, and and even more impolite than I am. And I just totally dig that about you. <laughs> <laughs> there was a compliment in there somewhere. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll, we'll take, take it. it. Something about, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. So, so the book is called The Rise of the Fourth Reich. Uh, help us out, Steve. What is the Fourth Reich? The Fourth Reich is the global biomedical fascist state that has been lying in, in, in wait. You know, just as the scriptures say, when the time was right, God sent his son. Well, the enemy has his own. Uh, timing that's right for him as well. And so this system has been put into place uh, beginning with government uh, single-payer health care schemes uh, along the lines of what we've seen with Obamacare in the United States where no longer are you treated as a patient in a lot of places anymore. It's just a protocol. Mm. And if you have a code, then they just follow the protocols from CDC and, and treat you accordingly. And, and everybody falls into line. Men have to get pap smears covered because there's no individuals anymore. Mm. Everybody's just part of a group community rating. All of this was put into place so that when the time was right, you know, like um, a virus that they were playing around with uh, in a Wuhan lab uh, gets out of get, somehow somehow gets out of uh, the lab and infects the world beginning in 2019. The time was right for the Thanos snap. And suddenly, everyone beat their sword into plowshares, unlike with the Third Reich, where there was at least, even if people were sympathetic to anti-Semitism or sympathetic to some of their autocratic authoritarian ideology, some form of nationalistic rivalry would say, well, we want to be the anti-Semites. We want to be the autocrats. We want to be the authoritarians of ourselves or other people, not with un under your thumb. So we'll fight back. In this case, right away, borders erased nationalistic rivalries erased, the Thanos snap, and it was suddenly like, for the first time since Babel, 
one global community with a few outliers like Sweden and others, everyone decided sovereignty didn't matter, borders didn't mm. matter, decadence didn't matter. Put it this, guys, we were the ones now trying to get the kids back in the government schools for the first time <laughs> ever, okay? Oh my goodness. Nothing mattered. <laughs> Nothing mattered except complete goose-stepping fidelity and, and knee-bending to Zod. Period. Nothing right. mattered but that. So, and every major nation and region on earth succumbed to this and imposed it on its people. Mm. That is the Fifth Reich. So, wow. Steve, um, we've talked about this before. I know on, when you came on Water Break uh, sometime last year. It, it, did, did 2020 make you more post-mill or more pre-mill? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah, you know I think, that. You know yeah, what I'm saying. I think I agree with Steve on that one. So, 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 Steve, I have to go back when you said that you're talking about the social programs that got in place by Obamacare, but then it made me go back and think, like, this is a longer march than that. So, you have to be pointing at Social Security and welfare as systems that were leading to this too, right? Well, those are the arguments that Reagan made in the in the early '60s when he traveled the country for General Electric and and Pepsi, making speeches that these programs. Now that and now we're going to add Medicare and Medicaid into the and the great society that these are creeping acts of socialism. This is, these are camels' noses under the tent. But here's the thing, though, I would say is those programs uh, do not provide the social welfare net. Doesn't provide the unique invasion of bodily autonomy that the healthcare system does. The idea that you are no longer your own individual now. When when a lot of us on the right got it, particularly as Christians, when we got it, we got into this business. It was to fight people like Bill Maher and Naomi Wolf, mm. the feminist, right? Because because they also believed we were individuals, but we we didn't, we weren't accountable to God either. We were just accountable to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we find ourselves often parroting the same remarks of people like Andrew Sullivan. Why? Because the argument that we had with the traditional left in America, we all agreed that human beings in, had, had conferred on them by existing some form of individual agency. Mm -hmm. We all agreed on this, some form of conscience that mm -hmm. they could act on. The disagreement was, first of all, where did that conference of agency come from? We argued it came from we're the Imago Dei, we're made in the image of God, and therefore that comes with it inherent responsibility to that end. Those people were over there argued we were not. We're just accidents of nature. And so there is no divine mandate, let alone responsibility. And therefore, there is nothing to dictate my conscience except will it hurt somebody else? No, then I'm fine doing it. Really, that was that was the culture war debate in America, That's whether right. it was abortion or gay marriage or pick an issue. That was the culture war debate in America for the last generation. What has changed with COVID is now... We're, we're debating not the limits of your agency and autonomy, but whether you have it at all. Yeah. Not the limits of your conscience, mm. but whether you have it at all. Wait, wait, you did your own research on masks and found 90 years of study show they don't work? Come on uh, You now. just hate your grandmother. Come on okay? now. Yeah. That's, <laughs> Come on that's now. it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Right. And, and so now, now, uh, now we still have all the same disagreements with Naomi Wolf and Bill Maher on the fundamentals of society we had 30 years ago. Yeah. But now... We, we're like, now we get booked on Bill Maher's show and Naomi Wolf does shows with Steve Bannon. Why? <laughs> because because we're now we're now realizing I miss the old culture war where we at least admitted we were free. Preach, preach. The yeah. argument was the the argument was the depths and limits of human freedom. Right. Now the argument is, do you have any freedom at all? Mm. Steve, you know, when, when you wrote this book, I mean, you're writing this book to a a culture that shut down for the most part. I mean, most of everybody kind of willingly went along with it. I mean, do you think your, your history book here is going to make a difference that, um, you know, all these interviews that you, you had in this book, all these firsthand experiences of COVID. I, I mean, I feel like I'm talking to like a deaf and dumb culture. I, I, I don't know what to do. Plenty of times I've asked myself that question, Gabe. I, do you think, do you think when Paul sat down to write Galatians, you're like, are you kidding me? These freaking Judaizers, I got to talk to these people again, again. <laughs> How many more times? About And you can almost sense his frustration. Fine. Y'all love circumcision so much. Wop your whole damn penis is off and let's just call it a day. Right? right? Okay. Right. I mean, you, you, you wonder did, when Amos walks, it comes in from shepherding sheep. Did he really know we were going to be talking about the letter that he wrote 
yeah. 3,000 years later, yeah. you know? Yeah. And and I think this is where ours, our, ours is not to wonder why. Ours is just to do and die, mm -hmm. all right? We fulfill the mandate God gives us. And, and consequences are not within our purview to wonder about such things. Mm -hmm. Here's what I can tell you. Right now, according to Amazon, the three top hardcover political books in America are written by, number three, Greta Thunberg, mm. number two, Mike Pompeo, and number one, Steve Dace and Daniel Horowitz. That's awesome. Mike Pompeo is a former member of Congress, mm -hmm. and he was Donald Trump's Secretary of State, which means he's got every GOP email list you could imagine. He was also head of the CIA, right. which means he has every email list you could imagine. <laughs> right. Okay. Yep. Greta Thunberg. Greta Thunberg is the most well-funded piece of, of human agitprop on planet Earth today. Wow. Yeah. We're two guys with just our own shows. Yeah. We have managed to, to create a best-selling book without getting any bookings on Fox News, which is very difficult to do yeah. on the right. Yep. And that is simply because of the grace of God and yep. the activism within our own bases and, 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 and grassroots truth. And so in the end, if the world, if the broader world doesn't want to hear what we have to say, mm -hmm. we're not the ones being punished here. Mm -hmm. They're the ones punishing themselves. We have fulfilled our calling. There is a strength to this, though, too. I, the way that you guys set up the book, there's some assumptions here that you believe that people are still human, that they can make rational arguments, and you set it up in a court case where you put them in the jury box, and you say, listen, mm -hmm. we're going to present this to you. We know that there's still humans out there that want to hear truth, and we know if we can just expose the truth, everything else will do what it's supposed to do. And I think that's what's really brilliant about this, although I kind of agree with Gabe. You're taking a risk to assume that, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that the same people that were in law lockdown would they be yeah. able to hear these kind of arguments but steve i guess one of the questions that you i believe a wise man once said those with ears to hear or something along yeah, those lines yeah, right. Right. that's right um yeah i want to ask you though in the opening of the book you said there need to be some sort of firewall set in place and um and kind of an update to the nuremberg code i wonder what do you think those firewalls need to be in place are the there's an appendix in the book that lays all of them out and very painstaking daniel horowitz only level of, of specificity. <laughs> Thank right? God for okay. that man. Yeah. yeah. All right. Read, Daniel, da reading Daniel reminds me of what Peter says about Paul, St. Paul when he says, you know, some of the things that Paul writes are hard to understand. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, There's you know, so much with when, that. <laughs> when, when, when Daniel wanted to write that appendix, I'm like, that is all you, G. You got that. Yeah. One. Okay. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, he got, he let his freak flag fly. I mean, the level of specificity, I think I had to finally cut him off at like 30,000 words or something. It was, it, I mean, he literally has, he, that the appendix that he wrote is an insanely detailed, mm -hmm. um, you know, rubric of public policy at, at particularly the state and local level, because as you learn, Gabe, the hard way with cuffs around your wrists, yeah. mm. this, these edicts came from Washington, but they were imposed on the state and local level. And so a lot of the, the, the policy specifics in the appendix that Daniel, that Daniel wrote, everything else in the book is a, is a pure 50, 50 collaboration between the two of us. But the appendix is really, that's his magnum opus. And that's where mm -hmm. he shines is with the specifics on policy. And where I think this book shines is, is actually not the parts of the book that Daniel and I wrote in our own voice. It is, and I, you know, when I first started in this business, I really, I arrogantly thought my uniquely gifted way of making arguments <laughs> is, 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 was, yeah. is, is why the system hates me. Yeah. What I found out is the system hated me because I gave people and voices that they didn't want to give a platform to Come a platform now. to yeah. Come on now. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. That's where this book shines. It's the middle innings of this book. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's like a playoff game in Major League Baseball. Most playoff games in Major League Baseball are decided by bullpens now in the sixth and seventh middle innings, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's these middle innings now where you hear the testimonies of whistleblowers from healthcare and the Department of Defense yeah. and people who have suffered and people who watch their children suffer. It's 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 like when I in my career I've interviewed numerous former homosexuals, the mm -hmm. people that the world says do not exist. Right. Yeah. And, and this is where, you know, the, 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 the formerly blind man says to the Sanhedrin, I don't know if this man's a sinner or not. Here's what I know. Yeah. I once was blind. Now I see. You know I was blind. You knew me when I was blind. 
Now I'm looking you in the eye. You have to deal with the power of my testimony. And I think that's where Amen. this book shines is giving these people a platform to be heard when the media wants to act as if they don't exist. So, Steve, Steve you, yeah. you, 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 so you summon these witnesses, you know, to the jury, to the jury of public opinion. You summons them. Uh, they're all powerful. I know not one of them is extraneous. If if you if you had to highlight two, you say these are these are the witnesses. Don't miss these. I know they're, mm. I know they're all important, but but if you could highlight two of them, who would they be? Not quite, there, it would be hard to highlight two of them, but if we had to, the two bookends, Teresa Long, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who was the first person to, to, to whistleblow what was inside the DMED, that's the Department of Defense's Medical Epidemiological Database of yep. every enlisted member of the armed forces, yep. okay? okay. Um, and then the very end is a woman named Vera Sharav, who is one of the last living American Holocaust survivors. Mm. Mm. And we, we bring her in as a subject matter expert. And the things that she, that she talks about, how, how corporations in Germany were used to impose a lot of uh, the, the technological uh, instrumentation of the Third Reich, like Mercedes, for example, with, the, with vehicles. Um, uh, IBM is who created a lot of the, 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 the coding that they use to tag people, to track them, for example. Yeah. And, and, and she makes these very specific parallels to what happened in Germany in the 1930s to what happened throughout all of the world here the last three years. Lord have mercy. While we were in lockdowns, now I lived in a state that was never officially locked down, but a lot of businesses just weren't open and there was not a lot to do even with a, without a stay-at-home order, right? Yep. And so like a lot of Americans, I'm like Netflix and chilling. And I watched this documentary on Nazi Germany, on the lead up to Nazi Germany on Netflix that I found quite chilling. The documentary starts off talking about what Germany was like at the turn of the 20th century. It was the most enlightened, prosperous, progressive country on earth. It was, it was the world's greatest superpower coming out of Bismarck and the Prussian era. It was the, they, had a, they, had, they had figured out benevolent, autocratic dictatorship under the Kaisers um, with, with democratic systems on a local level. It was a flourishing metropolis. They, they show silent film footage of what, you know, of, of mass transit systems and stuff that looked like a Fritz Lang film of the future from that era. And yet it was the present. It's what life was like in Hamburg and Berlin and much of Germany. And that same society, and the, the question that this BBC documentary series from about 20 years ago posed was, how did this society, this generation who lived in this modern progressive utopia, and by the, in, the, in the span of one generation, the next 40 years, plunge the world into not one, but two different cataclysms. Mm. The first one, which killed 20 million people and introduced weapons of mass destruction to the world. The second one, which introduced the Holocaust to the world. How did it happen? And they, and they go through the collapse of that society. And, and I watched this, and my goodness, it reminded me so much of, you know, frankly, what this country is like right now in a lot of places. And, and what you learn, Romans 1, is when a culture lets go of the rope, it goes fast. Mm. And in the, in the early 30s, Germany let go of the rope and went fast. Mm. And what we contemplated doing the last three years under COVID was letting go of the rope. Mm. Wow. <sighs> what, um, if there's one interview that you'd want to include in this book that didn't make it, um, you know, you've, you've, you know, through your show, you've interviewed a lot of, uh, good guests, so a lot of witnesses, a lot of witnesses over the last two years. Who would have you liked to have kind of included in this book? Anthony Fauci. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I'd pay for that twice. <laughs> without, without, without question, Anthony Fauci or the, his boss, Francis Collins. And maybe, maybe more, the more I think about it, um, I, I think I, I absolutely believe this, and I don't say this for effect or rhetorical flourish. I absolutely believe Anthony Fauci is a malevolent force on the earth. I absolutely mm. believe that. Mm. I think Francis Collins is a stand-in for, in fact, I think Collins and Fauci both are stand-ins, symbols 
of much of what's happened to Western civilization or what we used to call Christendom. Mm. Fauci is the affirmative, out in the open, malevolent force investigating on on foster investigating using foster kids in New York City to as, as guinea pigs for uh, AIDS drugs. Right, on, yeah, working with the Shycoms to develop chimeric concoctions in Wuhan. I think he is an outright in your face wolf, mm -hmm. malevolent force. I think Francis Collins is a symbol of the anemic, emasculated, self intentionally self deceived, nicer than God, ridiculous <laughs> church that has that that doesn't that that used to pretend to oppose malevolent forces <laughs> and now lectures shows like yours and mine on why are you the problems for wanting to confront the malevolent force you're the divisive force you're the reasons for divisiveness yeah. there ought to wow. be unity around this malevolent force yeah. there that's that to me there the two of them are the two towers the eyes and fauci's mordor and Collins is Isengard, the <laughs> fool who thinks he's going to cut a deal with Mordor. So I think that's it. So you Man. cover a lot of the interviews you Preach, cover preacher. in this book. <laughs> a lot of the interviews are, you know, coming from uh, medical doctors in the military or or uh, private uh, doctors in the in just in the, in the private practice or patients. Um, and they're kind of brought forth and, and you're trying to tell the people who are reading the book, they're the jury. OK, you know, yeah. read through these testimonies and. <laughs> And read through these witnesses. Um, but the one thing that uh, you didn't include in this was kind of like um, you didn't put the church on trial. And and the church was very much compromised and went along with these things and was kind of – and is, Which, is in a, what happened in the in the Third Reich. In a, well, exactly. Yes. Yeah, the, 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 right. yeah. the German church was heavily compromised in this. And can I load that yeah. question up before yeah, you yeah. – I want to load that question up too yeah. because I think you got private institutions – as well, that, like businesses, like businesses yeah. that could have had the option to stand up, and they didn't either. So they collapsed along with the churches and every other institution that was governmental. Yeah. So with that, the question: what, what, Where are they in this? Why didn't you bring them to to bear at all on this conversation? I'm going to give you an analogy that at first is going to seem like it's has nothing to do with your question, but I promise you, it, it will answer it. <laughs> okay, I like boomerangs. <laughs> um. I used to I used to write movie reviews for World Net Daily early in my career, and um, I I went and saw a a movie during this time called Paranormal Activity. Mm -hmm. That was a massive uh, viral. It was like it was almost like a the the 21st century Blair Witch Project mm -hmm. found footage movie on a small budget yeah. that made a billion dollars. Yeah. Okay, and I I I sat in the theater opening night with my wife, and I was uh, in the it was fascinating to me. This was the first time I had ever seen ho mainstream Hollywood produce a horror film in the spiritual demonic genre where the church was never included. There's no, no Catholic priest is brought in for an exorcism. No minister is consulted. Mm. It, and, and, it, and it didn't smear the church, didn't mock the church. It was like this existed on an earth that the church doesn't exist, mm. that the only spiritual influence is malevolent. And in this film, they go to they Google what to do about a demon. They go to the demonologist at the university. They ask her her dad, How, "What do we do about this demon that's haunting us in our home?" And they, they they go to every place where common sense and knowledge is found is is it's is said to be found in the culture, except the one place that would have the knowledge of what they're actually up against. Yeah. And it's like the church didn't exist. It's such a non entity in this fight. It doesn't exist. Am I boomerang around, booming around yeah. now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We know. We know. I, call you. I put the puzzle together. I'm with you. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah, we, we're not. We're not. We're not relevant. We're, the church mm. is so irrelevant. It's not even worth holding accountable. It's a waste of time. <laughs> I, <laughs> Ow! What does what does Vody say? If if you can't say amen, say ouch. <laughs> I don't. Uh, That's right. I don't like that answer, Steve. Um, <laughs> no, it, it sucks, guys. That answer sucks. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Steve says. Steve says that answer sucks. <laughs> but it, but, yeah. but it's, it's where we are. This stuff isn't happening in the culture because the church is unaware. It's because the church is irrelevant. The so, church isn't a relevant institution. It is, it is, it is exiled itself. Yeah. It's, revolu it's Revelation 3. Jesus has come and taken away the lampstand. It's not interested in competing anymore. Yeah. And so, so the Lord has said, you know what? 
You don't want to compete anymore. We're taking the jersey away. Don't wear the jersey. Don't. What are you putting mm-hmm. the jersey on? You ain't mm-hmm. in the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We take the jersey back. Yeah. That's where we are. So then you, you would you would say, would you would this be a fair assessment to say the church is almost in the same place it was in Germany? Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's what the anxious to be co-opted. And that's what Francis Collins is the co-opted yeah. church. Right. Hey, I'm a Christian. Francis Collins will wind up major figures in American evangelicalism yep. to shill on behalf of this toxic, poisonous jab and lockdowns and masks. And everything else. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Steve, you know, um, I followed you uh, before Cross Politics started in 2016. um, Yeah, me too. And um, you used to be, I think, far more, um, this might not be the best descriptive, but far more negative about the political world around you. And it's not that you don't see negative, um, I mean, this whole book, you know, you know. it, but I do see that you you seem like you've gotten a little more positive over the years and how you um, you're point fo- out <laughs> you're gonna follow this up out, with yeah. that question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how did you get there? It, this, so. is, this is exactly why Steve loves this show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this right here. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You just hit the table and gave the organ. Um it, and it, but it's not that you don't analyze and see the problems, but I I've I've also think that you've you've gotten more um, like there's more faith in your politics. There's more faith in your analysis, knowing that God is in heaven and God is sovereign over yep. over everything. Um, how how and it seems like America's gotten worse since you started in your um, career, but yet you you seem more cheerful and positive, even despite um, some of the ch- negative negative challenges, negative political issues around us. What's going on? I think that's a really smart. I know you were just they were just busting your chops, Gabe, but that's a. That's a very smart, nuanced observation. And I had to be, when I got into this business, I really, my first plan was I'm going to be, I'm going to provide the vehicle by which I'm going to let Christians in my, my native state of Iowa, because remember I was a local host originally, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the point person that's going to let Christians in my native state of Iowa take over the Republican party. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know any of the existing Christian leadership in the state at all. Mm-hmm. And and so I just assumed, you know, I'm a relatively new believer. I've only been a believer for a few years. These people have been believers, you know, longer than I've been alive almost. So I assume they know what's going on. And I assume that they they didn't take control already because they were outnumbered and outgunned and they needed someone like me to come in and provide the weapon of mass destruction called a 50,000 watt blowtorch radio station yeah. that would give them the competitive edge. Yeah. And then I found, oh my, then I got those people into power <laughs> and they knifed us Yo. repeatedly. Yeah. Oof. And I realized, oh my gosh, I, we're the enemy. Yeah. I, I just put the enemy in charge. Then I then I got in. Then I got national, and I went, went national. I thought, all right, we're going to make the focus and focal point of the show a broader biblical worldview, and 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 get the church to engage that way. And then I started looking at my inbox and emails from people around the country. Why do I hear all this stuff on your your show, and I never hear this? No one talks to me like this at church. I never mm-hmm. hear my pastor talk to me about like mm-hmm. this. This stuff never even comes up at church. Wow. I and and so I at first I had to get through the phase of being angry <laughs> mm-hmm. and cynical mm-hmm. and bitter that the institutions that I thought I was going to come in and take a part, uh, take part in in giving um, an, an advantage to were the ones that had actually lost the culture, and so I'm over that now. And so now I am in, I'm in terraforming mode. Okay. <laughs> now I'm in, you know what? We'll just do this ourselves. I'm not, I'm not waiting for institutions. I've set out, my company made millions of dollars or, or invested millions of dollars. It ain't paid me the last few years, guys, yeah. mm. to make this movie nefarious. Yeah. It won't look or sound like any other faith-based film you've ever seen. It's just going to be a lot better than any other faith-based film you've mm-hmm. ever seen. But we're already being told by the traditional, well, it's rated R. Okay. Even though there's no nudity, no swear words, no blasphemies, nothing. They just rated it R to screw us. The the, the MPA did. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. it looks creepy. You know, you want you want, here, let me tell you a creepy story. There once was a, a widowed a widowed woman who dressed up like a hooker on the side of a road Come on to catch her drunken father in law one night so that he would knock her up so that he would then be responsible for taking care of her and her out of, and, and her uh, her orphans her son so he doesn't become an orphan. Is, is that is that too radical for you? Because that's a story out of Genesis, moron. Okay? <laughs> you better preach up in here, Steve. You better preach, man. And I just I just decided, you know what? 
I'm just gonna go, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna proclaim truth. Yeah. And whoever's with me is with me. Right now, Naomi Wolf is my pen pal. God bless her. Mm. <laughs> okay. Wow. We're buddies. Wow. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whoever whoever whoever's for the truth, right. dude. Rob, I said to Robert F. Kennedy Jr., yeah. schmuck, fit, born to a 15-year-old mom from Iowa. I looked him in the eye a month ago at Jason Whitlock's studio in Nashville and said, brother, I got into this business to beat people like you mm. and to defeat people like you. And now you're going to be one of the few people I've ever asked this of. Can I get a picture with you? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because I, I, in the end, I gave up on all the institutions yeah. and said, I'm putting my trust in the truth, period. Mm. You know, it reminds me a lot of the cave of Adullam. You know, like yeah. th think of David, yeah. you know, he, I mean, the, the institution failed. The, the, you know, the king, the, yeah. the king's anointed. Um, David's on the run. You know, the people that is supposed to help him are trying to kill him. And then you got all the people just streaming in from all the other places um, saying, hey, you're, you're standing for the truth. You're with the Lord. We're going to stand with you. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's really that's really great. I, I let me read this ad really quick yeah, before yeah. you close. Dime Payments is a Christian-owned processing payment business. Every business needs a payment process system. So go to dimepayments.com/flf and sign your business up today. Working with them supports us here across Politic, and they won't cancel you like Stripe canceled President Trump. They won't cancel you like Mailchimp canceled the Babylon Bee. So check them out today. At least have a phone call. Tell them that Cross Politics sent you. Go to dimepayments.com forward slash FLF. Mm. Rise of the Fourth Reich by Steve Dace and Daniel Horowitz. Everybody needs it. You've been preaching, so I'm playing the, the, the church organ. This is, <laughs> yes. oh my yeah, goodness. Good. <laughs> it's offering time. Yeah, I guess I'm saying, yeah. do your offerings. Yeah, yeah. So go get this. Every house needs to own this book. I'm serious. Maybe really like three, three copies. Yeah, it, and it, is, this, is this one of those things, Steve, go to Amazon to buy it because of all the rankings and everything that are going on? Yeah, I hate telling people. I feel dirty telling people to do that, but yeah. the publisher will will hurt me if I don't. You just okay? told me a dirty story. The guy uses dirty things. Come on now. <laughs> there you go. But it, it is it, it's the only ranking system that matters really anymore is Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Brother, thank right. you so much for coming on the show. Appreciate thank you for you. what you're doing. Appreciate you so much. Thanks, Steve. If thank you, guys. If you're single, get married. If you're married, have you some kids. And if you have kids, go baptize them. Until tomorrow, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go fight, laugh, and feast this is cross politics glory mm, i feel god right there <laughs>